Welcome to DIY Automotive School with my friend Pete and Minnie the Body Shop Girl. It's everything you need to know about cars and more. All right, if we look right there, that's our base coat paint. That's base coat paint that goes on this car right here. Now, what we're doing is, this was in a bad collision uh, accident. And this car right here, if you look right here real close, you can see the shadow. Uh, it doesn't really have a good shine to it. The reason is, is because this car was painted with acrylic enamel. And acrylic enamel doesn't have a good shine. You can see the hood over there. You can see where the light's coming through. And it's just got a real dull uh, acrylic enamel look. It's a single stage type of paint that was popular back in its day. So the owner got in an accident. We got to replace the door. There's the old door. Here's the new door. And what we're doing is I went ahead and painted my door with the base coat. Now, I want to tell you that I hand, hand matched this paint. And if you look right in this area here, I don't even know if we're going to be able to see it. Okay, we're not going to be able to see it, but I hand matched it to the top of this right here. So it should match up pretty damn close. And I also went ahead and purchased, uh, I over-purchased paint on purpose. So if the owner isn't happy, he can go ahead and uh, blend into the fender and the quarter panel later on down the line. Uh, right now he can't afford that and he just wanted to fix the door only on the vehicle and the other problems that we had on it. But uh, the real reason that we're making this video here, making this little tutorial uh, uh, classroom uh, explanation you might call it, is because we have to max, match, we have to match the texture, we have to max the sheen and the shine to the original. Alright, there's two steps in mixing uh, your clear up to match the texture or the shine or the sheen that matches the rest of the car when you're only painting single panels. Even if I was blending the paint into this vehicle, I would still have to match the clear coat or the shine, you might call it, because it would look really, really funny if we had a show car shine on the door and then everything else was dull. So the first thing you want to do is uh, we mixed our paint up in this cup right here and then I went, I went ahead and poured it, uh, when we were done using what we needed, I poured it back into the can of paint. But I kept the residue, all right? That's an important step. The next thing we're going to do, we're going to get our clear, we're going to get our clear coat, and we're going to mix it up, we're going to mix up enough for two full wet coats of clear. And I'm going to go ahead and add that, if you just notice what I did there, I added that to the paint residue, alright, because that's an important step to make sure that it mixes. Now, uh, you might be looking at it saying, God, that's going to be brown on the car. Not really. If you look right here, it's very, very, very light and transparent. So we got our clear, the next thing we want to do, we want to take our uh, DX995. Now what is DX995? That's a product made by PPG. You can also buy other products. I like the PPG product because it breaks up and is a lot better to use and it's the higher quality end product. Uh, what it is, it's flattener. And we're going to go ahead, now this is a full pint, I'm going to go ahead and add approximately a quarter of a pint to that and when you use this it's very important and let me get a rag here it's very important to make sure that you clean the edge of your can just like I'm doing here all right because what happens is when this dries it turns to a very white chalky substance and you don't want to get that on the outside of the can if possible
then, of course, what we're going to do, we're going to take our hardener, because we need hardener uh, activator in our clear. We'll go ahead and add that. And then, we're going to take our paint stick, clean it off, there we go, and uh, we're going to mix that up thoroughly. This is the most important part of doing this, is to make sure that you mix your paint thoroughly, because uh, if you don't mix up that flattener into the clear 100%, when it dries, it'll have little white splotches on it, and we definitely don't want that, because once you get those little white dots in there, those little white specks, you have to sand it down and completely repaint the whole door. The next thing we're going to do, we're going to take our spray gun, and I just got done cleaning that out. Let me uh, clear it out there. Okay. Make sure that you use your strainer. That's very important. We're going to take our custom clear that we uh, mixed up. We'll go ahead and pour it into our gun, making sure that none of it drips onto the side of the gun. That's very important because Remember I was telling you about the, uh, the flattener when it dries? And if you look inside the strainer right there, you can see there's little specks in there. So it's very important to always use your strainer. And now we're ready to go ahead and clear coat our door with two full wet coats of clear. there I went ahead uh, my HVLP gun was fucking up on me so I had to rely on my good old number seven uh, Binks number seven to get the job done but uh, I went ahead and put uh, actually two thin coats and one full wet coat now I do have some forced air uh, drying that because I want to see what it's going to look like I don't want a real high gloss shine but then again I don't want it to be real dull and chalky so we're going to let that dry for a few minutes and uh, if I have to add more flattener, I will. If I have to take more out, there's only one thing to do. And that's to uh, dump most of the clear out and add more clear to it. And I should have it right on the button because uh, I've done this before and I'm actually pretty good at doing it. But uh, the longer that that dries, the duller the finish will get. If you look right here, you can see, if you, you look right there, this is actually my toolbox we're looking at. And you can see that uh, it's really not a high gloss shine, but you can still see the reflection of it in the door. So that's what we're looking for. That's what we're trying to achieve here by uh, using this procedure. And uh, I'd like to say while we're waiting, while we're waiting for the uh, paint to go ahead and dry for a few minutes, I'd like to say that uh, this is a non-buffing type of finish. Uh, once you add the flattener to it once you add the uh, the paint residue into your clear this that and the other it becomes a single stage type of a paint and you cannot buff this out uh, if it's a solid color with no pearls or no metallics you could buff it uh, lightly but uh, you can't really buff this type of finish it's uh, basically made for patch repairs and uh, you know, paint matching type of situations such as this without painting the whole fucking car uh, and saving the customer money or maybe yourself that you might be doing it at home and uh, want to do something like this. So if we look right there, you can see, you can see that it's got a semi-gloss to it. Watch when I walk. Okay, you can see my shadow, but you can't really see me. And I would also like to warn you out there, I would also like to warn all the viewers that are watching this, practice makes perfect. Don't expect to uh, get this right the first time you try it. Uh, this is a very, very technical situation you have when you're doing this. And uh, if you're not careful, you can really fuck up your paint job and fuck it up good. So be careful when you do this. I suggest that you practice on some test panels. Uh, you know, figure out where the balance is there of how much flattener should I use, how much uh, 
residue of the paint should I use? Do you understand what I'm saying? Did I use too much flattener? Did I use not enough flattener? Paint a couple test panels, a little small test panels, and uh, you know, practice and fuck around with it until fucking around gets you doing it right. All right, we went ahead and painted our door now. Uh, our objective here was to match the finish that he already had on his vehicle, which was a semi-gloss acrylic enamel finish, and that's what we did. I also hand matched the paint to the best, highest quality that I could. Let's go look at it and let's see what we got. Uh, now, we didn't do any blending on this. Uh, we didn't paint any other panels except for the door and the windshield post. Now, I did blend the windshield post up into the roof panel, but I stopped right there. Let's go look at it and see how good the paint matches and let's see if the texture is the same as well. So if you look at the car right here, you can see that uh, the paint matched pretty damn good. I'm really, really happy with it. Uh, it looks like it matches, as you go with the light, you can see that it, it matches really, really nice. Uh, I think it's a passable match and I think that uh, the owner's really gonna be happy with it. And uh, you can see right here, if you look, you can see that it has the same sheen on it as the rest of the car. And that's what we were trying to accomplish here when we were painting this door. We were trying to accomplish that using our flattener and uh, the residue of our paint with our clear. Now this car was in a very, very serious accident and I actually replaced this windshield post right here, uh, this pillar you might call it, and I did paint it up to this here and then I blended the clear into the roof. So if we look at that section, you can't even tell that it was painted at all. Really looks nice. So if you see right there, uh, taking your time and doing it right always pays off in the end. Uh, you know, the owner wanted to go and buy his own paint and I told him bullshit. I don't paint cars. If you bring your paint over here, I will not paint it. I will not guarantee it. I will not do anything. Uh, one thing you got to remember when you're doing a job like this and you're not blending paint, we'll say, is that your name is on that vehicle. And when you paint something, when you're just painting one panel and uh, then you don't paint the rest of it or you don't blend uh, because you're too fucking lazy or, you know, the guy doesn't want to pay you to do it, this, that, and the other, it really doesn't matter because it all comes down to this. When the car's driving on the road and somebody asks the owner who painted your car, they're going to say you and guess what? You're fucked in the ass because you just put yourself in the position to look like a dickhead. This is Pete, my friend Pete, your friend Pete, telling you, showing you, and doing the job right. Always remember to take your time, do it right, practice makes perfect. We'll see you later. Practice with that flattener and get her done. Thanks for watching DIY Automotive School. Classes don't stop till you know everything.